to start doing our game data API. So we're going to install Python. Um, we're going to set up Visual Studio Code for you guys to be able to develop Python code in it. Uh, we're going to install Flask, do build a small, small um, REST API, and then install Postman for us to be able to test it. Let's get started. All right. So first thing, we're going to go to python.org slash downloads, and uh, we are going to install Python. So you can just click the Python and download the one uh, for your OS version. Now double click the uh, Python executable you in, uh, downloaded to install it. Uh, on Windows, you're gonna wanna click that add python.exe uh, to pat and you can just click install now. It's gonna install and then you can close that window. Uh, next thing, I'm pretty sure you already have it, but if you don't, uh, I'm gonna show you how to install uh, Visual Studio Code because uh, I'm gonna be using PyCharm, but I just want you to I just want to help you guys get set up with uh, Python uh, for um, Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to download it. So you can just download and install it. The installer is pretty simple. You just have to accept the license agreement, uh, check where you want to install it. Uh, it's basically <laughs> just blink next, press next every time. Um, we, you can add pat uh, register code as an editor for super edit file type. I won't do this because um, I have it. You can all, you can use the other option. It's fine for you guys. Since I have another editor, I won't do, um, I don't want to link those file and you just install it. All right, so now the Visual Studio is installed. We can go and uh, to this page co uh, called visualstudio.com docs python tutorial flask. You can find it on Google. And then we're gonna basically follow a couple of things here because we wanna install the Python extension. So we can click on the Python and we can go install. Uh, it's gonna open your link inside your um, Visual Studio. Uh, code and then we can just click install. Now that it's installed, we can go click here in the explorer, open folder, then you're gonna choose where you wanna put your file. So I'm gonna go in game dev, I've done a folder called game services. So I'm gonna select open. Um, do you trust the author of file in folder? Yes, because those are my files. Uh, but now game services is empty because anyway, we're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna create a Python environment. So um, you're gonna access the command palette. So um, on uh, Windows, it's control shift P and it's command P on Mac. And we're gonna do, go create environment. So Python create environment. Uh, so we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna use VM, do not use Conda. We use VM. And we select the interpreter. So um, there's a global interpreter because we added to the pad, he can recognize it. And then uh, this is the one we're gonna use. So here we go. So now it's gonna create your virtual environment. And this is actually where all the package that we install, um, the version of uh, uh, what is a package for Python um, is gonna be uh, installed in. So inside here, um, you're gonna have like a library and then those are libraries that are installed. And so that way, that's way of Python of not uh, polluting your whole Python environment. Since, since Python is global to the system, you install your package inside your project and they're gonna go in here. So whenever we're gonna go in the console, we're gonna uh, enter that virtual environment and then we're gonna be able to install package. So yeah, uh, now let's install Flask. Okay, so for those of you who don't know uh, backend development at all um, or web development in general, Flask is uh, what we call a micro framework. So it's a uh, it's a web framework that can output um, in different formats. So it can be used to do a website. Uh, it can output HTML stuff like that. It can do anything you want to in a website, but it can also um, output JSON, which is what we're going to use it. We're going to use it as what we call a REST API. So it's just going to be an API. We're going to send them requests. It's going to process the request and it's going to send you back um, the JSON data. Um, so that's the framework we're going to use. So um, if we go back in Visual Studio here, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to start by installing Flask. So to install Flask, you go into Terminal, New Terminal, and here, the thing that is important is you're going to see here that VNV. VNV means you are sourced into that environment. So that means everything you install are going to be um, installed in here. So you always want that. Okay, so whenever you are in Visual Studio and you um, have a virtual environment, you um, do a new, ter new terminal, you're always going to be into that uh, VNV and that's what you want. Now, to install stuff in Python, you can do pip install and then you do uh, what you want to install, Flask. And then it's going to install it. The only thing is, um, 
this is this has been installed right you if i go here i can see flask is installed so i can actually use it um but usually what you want to do is uh, you're going to put that code on github so you want to make sure that all your dependencies are stored inside a file that you can freeze the version so that uh, anybody who wants to use your project can use it um uh, with and, and and be sure that it has the same version installed so for that you can do pip freeze and you do this and you uh, type the name of uh, the folder you uh, the, the file you want to put it in so for us it's all it is the standard in a python it's um, requirements.txt okay so let's go let's freeze this here so it created a file for us and it has all the library we have installed with the exact version that means that uh, next time the, someone wants to uh, install your project, he can do pip install dash r and uh, require, oh, requirement with uh, whoa, 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 dot txt. Yeah, exactly. And then it's going to install the exact same version. For us, it says a requirement already satisfied because we already have it installed. But uh, that's uh, where you freeze your dependency so that people can actually install the same version as you. Okay, now we have Flask. We are ready to get started. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a file. We're going to name it app.py. Okay, so that's going to be our entry point of our application. So this is always something like when the application starts to run, it's going to run um, this one first. So what we're going to do is, is we can import. So... Um, in C sharp, uh, you can import uh, things with using. Now, in here, it's uh, from to say there's there's multiple ways to import, but uh, for Flask is is going to be from Flask. Import Flask. Okay, so that means we have now the Flask object. So now we're going to create an app with that. So we're going to say app equal Flask, and we're going to put name like this, which is a uh, convention to put the name of the app, but name is like the name of the file. Okay, the name of the file you're, you're actually in. Um, so now we are going to declare a route. So we're going to say app.route. A route is a URL you can call to um, reach and execute that code. So what we're going to do, we're going to do that. So um, we're going to def to uh, define a uh, method. And we're going to do home which is like the the home page like this url usually represent the home page of the of your website or something for our api it's going to be the same and we're going to say return just a string hello flask well hello world let's go with hello world because it's classic hello world okay so now this is the one of the smallest uh, um thing you can do and right now we're going to see how we can call it now to run this, we have to set up a, a run debug configuration. So let's go and create a launch just uh, JSON and we're gonna uh, choose the Flask, launch and debug a Flask web application. So here we go. So now this is basically um, anything you need to uh, be able to kind of uh, do your app. I'm gonna um, remove the no reload because I actually want it to reload. Uh, and uh, that's kind of it for now. So now we can go into app.py and we should um, we should have here a new thing, Python Flask. Yeah, so it just doesn't show here. And we can do run. And there we go. So now it's running and it's listening on uh, this, uh, this um, link. So if we go and uh, follow the link, it's going to open the browser. And in the browser, you can see you have hello world so if you navigate to the url that says that's in the the the, um, the terminal output it's gonna ask it's gonna do this and now what we can do which is pretty cool now this is um live link so if i want to change this to hello flask you're gonna see that um whoops flask there you go if i save um it actually reloaded here I don't know why um, it, it always does that. Like, I don't know. There's something wrong with the with the reloader, but it actually reloaded. So if I go back into my uh, f my browser here um, and I reload, I have hello flask. So there's a link in between. Every time I ask this, that function here in the um, 
the, 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 the project execute. And now what we can do is we could do another one. So let's do another one. We're going to do this. The only important thing is the route needs to be unique. So unique. So let's say like player and let's call it uh, get player. And we're going to return something that is a JSON object. So a JSON object is like this. Sorry, we're going to return this and we're going to say uh, gamer tag or something. Um, is going to be, in my case, uh, let's say, how about dev, okay? So I save this, as you see, it refreshes, and now let's go back in the browser. I still have my route, but if I go in here and I do slash player, I get JSON. So this is the way, like, um, Firefox is presenting JSON, but you can go to raw data and I have like the, uh, the, the data that I send. And this is super easy to read and to transfer into a Unity C Sharp object. So um, that's why API are pretty powerful because then I can ask for specific information or I can store information on this server about a player, about uh, what he bought, what he achieved, anything that he does in the game that I want to save, um, I can have it save it in my um, web API and then um, ask for it uh, later. So yeah, so that's basically like a basic, basic API. Okay, so now for um, some type of request of HTTP request, like the one we just did, they are plenty simple. So HTTP has a um, couple of verbs that we call get, post, um, there's a delete, there's update, there's a couple one, okay? Um, but some of them are easy. Whenever you ask for a URL um, like this, it does a get request to a web server, okay? But sometimes we're gonna wanna do uh, something else because the verb has sp sp uh, specific purposes. So a get is really to retrieve information, a post verb, and or you, you can see it in here. In fact, when we receive the thing, uh, our, our call, we're get. But uh, a post is going to be to create something, create a new um, piece of data. Uh, put is going to be to modify it. W you can also use post. And delete is going to be to delete it. So there's going to be multiple verb. And the browser only really allow us to do get requests. So we're going to need another tool for us to be able to test um, the other request. And it's going to be a super cool tool because we can also like save collection for it. So um, it's going to be Postman. So I'm going to ask you to go and uh, go ahead and download it. Now that it's installed, you can open it. We're gonna go and um, we're gonna switch to uh, Workspace. It's gonna ask you to create an account, so you can just create one. Now that the account is created, we're gonna go and do a uh, Workspace here. So you can do uh, Create Workspace. It's gonna ask you for a name. So um, Game Data API. Uh, you can leave the other things here. Um, for now, teams are personal, depends on um, which access you have. It's not a, it's not, it's a non-issue for now. So here we are. So now if we uh, go here, we have um, a game that API. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a collection and that collection is going to be, uh, let's say, um, player for now. Let's, let's call it player. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a request here. So if we add a request, um, you can select the verb here. Those are all, uh, most of, almost all the verbs, uh, uh, I think. Some of them I just had never used. Uh, but um, let's say uh, get, post, put, delete uh, are the one you're going to use the most. Um, so now we can um, already go here and uh, ping our um, server. So in Visual Studio, my app is still running. So I can go here and say HTTP. Uh, colon colon um, uh, slash slash uh, local hosts or uh, local host uh, with 500 and we can do a get and then we're going to get our hello flask and if we do the other one we did player here we're going to get that json so here uh, we can rename the request and say um, get player okay so this is like a get player and returns us uh, player information for now these information are hard-coded but we're going to make it dynamic uh, later um, so let's take some time to kind of do a um, little setup here so we're going to create an environment okay um, yep there is no environment right now uh, but you can create on one here you click in here add environment and this is going to be our dev 
uh, environment. So dev is going to be your local machine. Okay. So dev is going to be here and you can have variables that represent, um, uh, that are going to replace some uh, things into the, um, the, the request. So uh, the URL, uh, the URL is going to change if you're in dev or if you're in uh, production, but they're going to be the same request. It's just the base URL is changing. So let's go into current value. So HTTP like this, look close, and then we're going to do uh, 5,000. So this is our basic URL. So what's cool about it, you hit control save, you get here. Here, you can change that whole thing for the variable by doing this and doing URL. So um, if you over it, it's going to say unresolved variable because we have no selected environment. So let's uh, div and you see here that if I highlight it, it says that is my URL. So in all your call, you're going to be able to put that URL slash whatever and then uh, still get the same information. And there it is for our um, game that API setup video. I know it was a lot of new stuff, a lot of stuff to take in, but uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll soon go back into uh, Unity. We have another video where we're gonna set up like the database, probably the next one. And then we're gonna go back to Unity for uh, uh, you guys to see how it all connects back to our uh, game, how we can call that API. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.